How common is relapse or recurrence of PMR after starting prednisone treatment? I was asked this question or a variation of it many times in my survey of people taking prednisone for PMR, GCA, and other conditions. And I found a scientific article that helps answer this. Plus, I learned all about this at a Harvard Medical School seminar I recently attended with professors from Harvard and other elite medical institutions telling me all the things I needed to know about prednisone and PMR. So PMR stands for polymyalgia rheumatica, and it's a condition where pain, stiffness, and inflammation in usually the shoulder joints, sometimes other joints like the hips, are affected, and it's very painful and debilitating. The problem is that the main treatment is prednisone, amazing medication. I personally took it for nine months. It saved my life, but it comes with a lot of side effects. And so some researchers did a study and published it in clinical rheumatology to show how often people were still taking prednisone after certain periods of time and then helped hypothesize why this is happening. Steroids like prednisone have been the go-to for PMR and other inflammatory conditions since the 50s and 60s because it's so effective at relieving the pain quickly. Often people with PMR will be surprised at how quickly the pain relief happens when they take prednisone. For some people, one case report showed as little as 12 hours after her first dose, a woman received pain relief. And for many others, it's within a few days or at least within less than two weeks. It all depends on the dose though. So sometimes you just don't have a high enough dose to get the pain relief. So they wanted to see how many patients were still taking prednisone for PMR after certain periods of time. And in this study, they found that after one year, 77% of patients were still taking prednisone. After two years, 51% of patients were still on prednisone. And even after five years, 25% of patients were still on prednisone. These numbers show that the guidelines that recommend tapering off after one year just aren't realistic for most people. It just doesn't happen. People are stuck on steroids for a long time. The guidelines recommend getting off of steroids within a year, but more than three fourths of people are still stuck on them. It's just not fair to try to put that kind of pressure on someone to unrealistically expect you to be able to get off of prednisone within a year when statistically, that's a lot less likely than possible. So why are patients stuck on steroids for so long? According to this study, one of the main reasons is relapses. The researchers found that about 43% of patients had a relapse within the first year of treatment. That means while you might've started out at somewhere between 25 and 15 milligrams of prednisone, and then you slowly taper off your prednisone, waiting to make sure your inflammation and pain is under control before you ever take your first drop in dose and that it stays there. Despite that, 43% of people had a relapse. And relapses were common even after your symptoms had improved somewhere during your prednisone taper. And so that meant an increase in the prednisone dose back up to wherever the last dose was that it worked for you. But relapses don't explain the whole thing because 77% of people were still on steroids, even though only 43% had a relapse. So other factors may include first incomplete remission. Some patients don't fully respond to steroids and need ongoing treatment. Second, the tapering. Some doctors may be trying to follow that guideline and tapering too quickly, and that might necessitate ongoing treatment. They obviously are trying to minimize your side effects to the steroids, but it's coming at the cost of the disease coming back. It's just such a tricky balance. And then third, when this study was completed, there were a lack of steroid sparing options. That means there are a, lot, a lack of alternative treatments that you could use for PMR. At the time of the study, there was nothing FDA approved for PMR. In fact, at the time of the study, prednisone wasn't even FDA approved for PMR. 
and still isn't. Isn't that funny? It's probably the condition that requires the most steroids over time, and it's not FDA approved. It's not listed on the label at all. So why would you even wanna go on a steroid sparing agent? Well, let's talk about the side effects that they found people actually experienced. 43% of PMR patients experienced severe side effects from taking prednisone and over 31 months of treatment. The side effects included osteoporosis and fractures, which means breaking a bone, high blood pressure, diabetes, cataracts and glaucoma in your eyes, and finally infections. Most of those side effects cause long-term irreversible permanent damage that unless precautions are taken to prevent it, or you have to do drastic measures like medications to treat it, or for cataracts, you have to actually have cataract surgery to remove it and replace it. So we've got to find better alternatives. They've looked at older drugs to see if they could help and maybe methotrexate or leflunamide might be alternatives, but the data is pretty mixed and not that effective. But there's good news. Since this study was published, two drugs have been FDA approved for PMR. These drugs are Actemra, which is tocilizumab, and Kevzara. And both of these drugs are injectable biological medications that you have to get your insurance to pay for because they're very expensive. They work pretty well in about half of people, but the other half just doesn't really work for. So if you're one of those lucky half, then hopefully you can get access to these medications, then you can slowly decrease off of prednisone to minimize these complications and side effects. So PMR is a very tough condition because prednisone and other treatments fail so often. The recurrence rate is real and dramatically high and the side effects happen even at lower doses. And so you wanna do whatever you can to get on the lowest effective dose for you, carefully listening to your body to prevent relapses and recurrence of the disease. And then be gentle with yourself, realizing that the guidelines are just not realistic and it's totally normal to still be taking prednisone two years after diagnosis because more than half of people are. And so do what you can to minimize the side effects while taking prednisone. And I have a checklist of things that you can do to minimize all the side effects I mentioned, plus others. And it's called the prednisone checklist. You just click the link below to download it now. Signing off is Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. Mm -hmm.